this beautiful Ohio afternoon on the eve of the debate, and we are so pleased, proud, and happy to have with us Bill Clinton. Let me say, let me say quickly just, just one word about this great man. He has been good for and to Ohio. He has, he has served our country with great distinction. He is now an ambassador throughout the world, letting the world know that America is a good country, a caring country. And so we're pleased and proud to have him here in Ohio today. We've got two weeks until early voting begins in Ohio. Two weeks. And, and he's my friend, and he's our friend, too. and he cares about Ohio, and he cares about you, and he cares about your families, he cares about our kids, he cares about our schools, he cares about the future of our state and our nation. And that's why he's here. And so I am so proud to present to you President Bill Clinton. together and she's a great politician and before we started doing the Cleveland events because the governor was preparing for the debate he called me and said you know this woman I'm, I'm running with she may be too good said, she is so good I may just be in the shade when we get reelected I thank them both for serving and I'll say more about that in a minute I want to thank your state treasurer Kevin Boyce and Mary Ellen O'Shaughnessy, thank you for running for Secretary of State. I want to thank Joe Magola and all the labor leaders that are here. Thank you very much. Senator Miller and all the members of the legislature that are here. Chris Redford, thanks for doing a great job as chair of the Ohio Democratic Party. And uh, I want to ask for your support for someone who is not here. And along toward the end of my remarks, I'll give you good reasons why. That's Mary Jo Kilroy. I think she's done great. My life now I spend working on real problems outside the government. I have a big foundation. We work on economic development in the United States. We work against childhood obesity. We provide drugs to half the poor people in the world on AIDS who get them and two-thirds of the children in poor countries. We do a lot of work in tuberculosis. We do a lot of economic development work in Africa and Latin America and Southeast Asia. I spend an enormous amount of time now in Haiti. Lots of times I'm in places where people live on less than two dollars a day. But it's interesting because it's always different from the rhetoric of this political campaign. Wherever I am, people just want to know what did you do, what are you going to do, and what are the results? And we keep score. And the reason I say that is that I'm here, yes, I love Ted Strickland. He's been good to me, he's been good to Hillary, he's been good to President Obama. He's one of the finest human beings I have ever known I, and one of the greatest public servants. I love him and I feel indebted to him, but I'm also here because I love my country and I love Ohio. Ohio. Winning the Democratic primary in Ohio in 1992 gave me the nomination of the Democratic Party on the first ballot. And when I carried Ohio in 1992, I'll never forget, I was home in Arkansas in the basement of the governor's mansion and I was watching all the TV and it said, 
it is clear that Governor Clinton has won Ohio, and because he has, he's going to be the next president. I am grateful to you. But I'm, all, I'm here because even when I'm doing all this other stuff, I'm fascinated with these economic challenges we face, and I spend about an hour a day studying them. So I'm not going to give you a traditional speech today. Exactly. I'm going to tell you things that I want you to tell people who aren't here. Because I think if this were a normal election, Ted Strickland would be running away with it. Lee Fisher would be running away with it. Mary Jo Kilroy would be re-elected overwhelmingly. I don't think we would have this environment. What's happened here? First of all, a lot of people are mad, and they got a right to be mad. There are millions of Americans out of work, millions more with part-time jobs that need full-time jobs. Millions of people go home every night and can hardly bear to look at their children over the dinner table because they're not sure they can pay their bills, not sure they can stay in their homes, not sure they can send their kids to college. They feel disempowered. It's tough when you're working as hard as you can, you're doing all you know to do, and you feel weak like a failure. That's tough. And people are mad. They should own their anger, and those of us who are running for office should honor their anger. But with all respect, we should also remind them that it's important how you channel your anger so that it does not cloud your judgment. I'll tell you a funny story, at least I think it is. I grew up in Arkansas next to Louisiana where the Cajun culture is really prominent. And the Cajuns have this really wry sense of humor. But it's the best story I know about what happens when you make a decision when you're mad. There were these two Cajuns, Jean and Pierre. They were friends. And Jean went up to Pierre and he said, Pierre, you always carry nice expensive cigars in your coat pocket. You don't have them there now. He said, no, because that fool Ramon, every time he sees me, he come up and slap me right in my chest and say, how you doing, boy? And he ruined my cigars. It cost me a lot of money. He said, but, Pierre, you have dynamite in your pocket now. <laughs> when he does it next time, he'll kill you. He said, I know, but I'm going to blow his hand off. <laughs> That's a guy that made a decision when he was mad.